Hey guys, it's Extreme Strategy here, and today we're checking out another mod for Total War Warhammer 3. And this mod is the Waka's Domination Map Pack, which adds in nine brand new maps into Total War Warhammer 3 for you to play Domination matches on. And I'm going to be showing you a few of the maps, and then a battle between me and another YouTuber, Indie Pride, using this mod. There'll be a link in the description for Indie Pride's channel if you want to go check it out, as he was the one who helped make this video, as there are two people required to play Domination matches. So first up, we have Hell Pits Depths. Hell Pits Depths is a grimy, scummy, skaven-looking map that consists of a fort where one of the capture points sits, and then a tower near which another capture point sits, with the final capture point sitting right in the middle of the map. And off to the sides, there are lava pools and various skaven equipment, all of which is meant to extract more warp stone. Next up is the sacred sea note of Chakwa. Now, for those of you who do not know what a sea note is, a sea note is where the ground collapses into a sinkhole that goes all the way down to groundwater and normally results from the collapse of limestone. And the sea note of Chakwa is an absolutely beautiful map with a ton of trees that you can use to hide units, and of course the sea note itself, which acts as a bit of an obstacle. Next up is the Geothermal Crevice, the most choke point heavy map inside of this map pack. The Geothermal Crevice has one large hill that holds part of a village, and then it has two bridges that connect to other hills that also hold parts of the village. And what this results in is a capture point sitting in the center of these hills, and the only way to access it is through three small pathways that can easily be held with a unit or two. And then for the end battle, Battle demo. I took the Dark Elves and brought an army with a lot of Dread Spears, Dark Shard Shields, a War Hydra, some Black Guards in Nagrond and Lothir Felhart. An Indie Pride starting army had some Skink Cohorts, an Ancient Salamander, Shredder of Lustria, Slot Mage Life, Legion of Chakwa, and some Saurus Warriors Shields. And then inside the battle, I wound up keeping an absolute ton of units tucked away inside of the trees, keeping some Dark Shards with Shields, Black Guards in Nagrond, and my General Lothir Felhart tucked away inside the trees and hidden away with where Indie Pride could not see them, all while moving some Black Guards and Nagrond and some Dark Shards through the trees to begin moving towards Capture Point number one, and summoning some Cold One Knights to go take Capture Point number three. Indie Pride moved up his Ancient Fire Salamander so that way it could start shooting fireballs into the lines of my Dark Shards, however, after one shot, it did pull away. At this point, all of Indie Pride's starting forces have reached Capture Point number two, and some Summon forces have moved in to take Capture Point number one. However, my Cold One Knights have managed to take Capture Point number three, and a Sorceress Dark is summoned to go forth and bring down some Doom Bolts and spells into the Lizardmen's front lines. However, they're going to begin moving towards the forest, and the Black Guards and Nagrand are going to have come forwards to fight the Skin Cohorts, which is going to be a fairly easy battle to win. At this point, I move all my troops out of the trees, revealing the full strength of my army with all of the Dark Shard Spears, Black Guards and Nagrand, and Lokir Felhart, all while sending up some troops to try and do some damage to the Lizardmen front lines. However, they are going to be getting shot by the Ancient Salamander, which is going to do very heavy amounts of damage. Sorceress of Dark and some Dark Shards with shields are going to have to take on a Skink Cohort, and then they're going to wind up getting charged by the Lizardmen Cold Ones, all while volleys of arrows are shot into the lines of the Lizardmen from some Dark Shards on the flank. And the Ancient Fire Salamander is going to take the opportunity to light them up with some fireballs of his own, and eventually point number one will begin to go to the Dark Elves. Cold One Knights are going to come forwards to put some pressure on capture point number two, and the battle between the Dark Elves and Lizardmen went massively in the Lizardmen's favor, as at this point all that is left of them of the attack force is the War Hydra, as the Dark Shards with shields and the Dread Spears have all been routed. And the War Hydra is fleeing, however it will also be regenerating its health. Over at point number one, things are not looking too good for the Dark Elves either, as a Doom Bolt strikes some of the Skin Cohorts, but also does damage to the Dark Shards with shields. Black Guards of Nagrand are fighting the Cohorts of Sotek, however the Cohorts of Sotek are unbreakable, making them a massive pain in the neck, but Loki or Felhart will manage to help out with the destruction of the cohort of Sotak as well. Cold One Spears got caught out in the open, however they pulled back and are now fighting some Cold Ones, a battle which will certainly go in their favor, as Indie Pride regains control of capture point number two. More Cold One Knights are pouring forwards, as well as an absolute ton of Dark Shards with crossbows and Dread Spears as well, and the Shredder of Lustria is going to come on over and pay the Dark Elves a visit and just begin to, as the name suggests, absolutely shred everything that stands in his path. However, he is going to be debuffed by Soul Stealer, meaning that some of his health is going to be removed from him. That is not going to do a whole lot, and then the Slon Mage of Life is going to pop the massive shield ability, which looks absolutely amazing, but makes the Shredder of Lustria even more powerful. Some units are going to come back, try and put some more pressure on Capture Point 2, all while the waves of Dark Elves get absolutely butchered by a spell cast by the little Slon Mage Priest, and the Shades, along with some of the Dark Shards with shields, are going to keep firing volley after volley into the lines of the Lizardmen, trying to bring down the Slon Mage Priest of Life. Cold Ones are going to enter the fray against the Cold One Knights, 
yet again. The Subskink cohorts are going to push forwards and take out the Dread Spears, meaning that Capture Point number two goes back to Indie Pride yet again. Capture Point number one has been taken over by Indie Pride, and he is just slaughtering the remains of my troops. And even more units are going to come pouring out of the forest as Shades open fire onto the Shredder of Lustria, and some Blackguards and Nagron come pouring into the fray. However, they won't be able to do much as the Lizardmen have taken point number three, and it's going to triple cap me, resulting in my defeat. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Also, go check out the Discord server, the mod, and Indie Pride's channel. Links to all that in the description below. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.